This is Algebra 2, Chapter 7, Section 8, the final section in this chapter, in which we will be studying the exponential and logarithmic functions and how to use them in problems. And the first scenario we're going to look at is exponential growth and decay. Now these have similar formulas. Growth and decay look a lot alike. The difference is in the uh, exponent, decay is negative, which makes sense. If you're decaying, you're losing things. In both cases, A stands for the original amount of what you had. K stands for your rate of continuous growth or decay, depending on which way you're going. And I'll bet you can guess what T stands for. Time. These kinds of things, growth is typically a uh, like a bacteria growth or a cell growth or something like that. can also be used for compound interest. I mean, this looks a lot like the compound interest formula, P, E to the R, T. Decay is typically something like radioactive decay, and that's what we're going to be dealing with first is working with radioactive material. So something you need to know about is called the half-life. Whenever you have a radioactive substance, that thing is de uh, deteriorating, disintegrating over time. And the half-life is the amount of time it takes for half of the atoms to disintegrate. Every radioactive material has a different half-life. For plutonium-239, the half-life happens to be 24,000 years. So our job is to find the value of K for plutonium-239. So we're, we see it's a decay because we're disintegrating atoms, so we're decaying. We need to figure out what the K is. Now, they don't tell me anything other than 24,000 years. So I don't know how much plutonium-239 that I have. So I'm going to assume, for the sake of argument, that I have one gram, one pound, one something. Okay. In 24,000 years... I'm going to have half of what I started with. So if I started with one gram, I'm going to end up with half a gram. Okay. Pick, you can pick any number you want to here for A, so long as you have half as much over here for Y. Picking one makes life easy because you don't have to divide by anything. So one times my stuff leaves me e to the negative 24,000 k. As we talked about last time, we want to take an ln here. ln of 0.5 is negative 0.693. After you do enough half-life problems, you'll get to know that number pretty well. And then divide by 24,000 and we get a value for k. Okay. Your k values are typically going to have a decimal and several zeros. <clears throat> so don't be too alarmed when you get those kinds of numbers. Let's do another half-life problem where we do more with it. Carbon-14 is an atom that they use for dating objects, finding out how old they are. And the half-life of C14 is 5,730 years. Now suppose they do some digging and they find an animal bone, and they measure how much C14 is in it, and they know how much should be in it. They know that it has 2% of what it should have had. Our job is to figure out how old is the bone. Okay, Once again, there, there's not a lot of information here. We know the half-life 
and we know we're at 2%. Okay. The first job in a problem like this is to find the value for k. Now it's not going to be the same value for k from the last problem because that was plutonium-239, this is carbon-14. They have different values. <clears throat> so again, I'm just going to use starting with 1 gram so that I can find my k, just like we did on the last problem. Take my ln. There's that number again, negative 0.693. Do a little dividing, we have a value for k. Now having a value for k here, now we're able to use that value of k to find t. And here's where the fun begins. 2% as a decimal is 0.02. Again, let's assume we should have 1 gram, then 2% would be 0.02 grams. Take the ln of both sides. ln of 0 0.02 is negative 3.912. And now divide, and we find out that the bone is 32,600 years old. <clears throat> so if somebody told you that was a T-Rex bone, don't believe it. Because T-Rex would have been a lot more years ago than that. So we've done a couple of decay problems. Let's do some growth now. We have a bacteria that is growing exponentially. We started with 1,000 cells of bacteria. 40 minutes later, we came back and found out that we had 1,650 cells. The question is, how many cells should we have after 90 minutes? Okay. Well, just like before, our first job is to figure out K. Now, this is a growth formula, so I'm not going to have a negative in my power. I had 1,650 at the end of the deal, 1,000 at the beginning, and 40 minutes is the time. Do a little dividing. Take the LN. My calculator tells me that's 0.501. Divided by 40 gives me a K of 0 0.013. Now that I have my K, I can find Y. This time I don't know why. We're starting at 1,000. We have a value for K and 90 minutes of time. 90 times 0 0.013 gives me 1.17 e to that power is 3.222. So you're going to have 3,222 uh, cells, roughly speaking. If you rounded this a little different, you might get a slightly different answer for the number of cells. As long as you're in the right neighborhood, I'm not going to quibble over one or two bacteria. So we've seen growth, we've seen decay, now, the problem with exponential growth formulas is that it assumes that that population can continue growing forever. But there are limitations out there in the real world that will affect being able to grow forever. Things like a limited food supply, a limited amount of space. Okay, there are things that will control, that will keep the population in check and it will eventually reach some kind of a maximum value. These kind of functions, or these kinds of situations, have a special function. It's called a logistic growth function that takes these limitations into account. So it stops it from growing per forever and ever, indefinitely. We're going to be asked to make graphs of these functions and... We're going to be asked to find when we get to a certain value, and then finally when we get to the maximum population that we can get. Now, there are techniques we can use to do these. The best plan is to use the graphing calculator. So we'll do a uh, mini lesson in class where we use the graphing calculators to deal with these functions. 
rather than try to have you do it from the video here. We'll do those in class together. So we've dealt with growth and decay problems that you'll be able to work on some. And then we'll do these logistical growth problems. And we'll do those in class. If you had questions along the way, hopefully you wrote those down. Bring them in with you to ask, and we will see you in class.